In this video, I'll show you the step-by-step -step method of making a 3D part in AutoCAD and then 3D printing it directly using its STL file. Now, essentially, I have this ball which I want to place on my table, but when I put it anywhere, it just rolls off. So to stop that, I'll make a round base for this rugby ball using AutoCAD. Then I'll send it to a slicer software that will make the G code which a 3D printer understands. And then finally, we'll 3D print it. So let's start with the measurements first. This video is made with AutoCAD, but just in case you don't have AutoCAD, then Autodesk is running a discount of 15% on AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT annual and 20% on three year subscription. The discount is available from January 10th to 13th only. Check the link in the description to get your discount now. So here I have this ball and I'm going to use calipers for this measurement. So let's turn it on, set it to zero. And now let's start with the measurement. So this ball is a rubber ball. So measurement is not going to be very accurate. We'll just take the approximate length here and then we'll use that for our 3D printed piece. So let's take the diameter first and I'll use this line as the reference which I've already drawn. So here it is which happens to be about 45 mm. So all right, so that's about 45 mm diameter. All right, now for the height. Well, again, I'm just going to take the approximate measurement here. This is just a rubber ball, so things are not going to be very perfect. We just need a rough idea. And that happens to be about, well, 30 mm, I would say, 29.20, so let's take it at 30 mm. And that's our measurement. So using these two measurements, we'll make our part. All right, now to start making the 3D object, we will start with the 3D modeling workspace. So as you can see, I'm already in 3D modeling workspace, but if you are not, then click this gear icon and change that to 3D modeling. Now, when you are in 3D modeling, start with units. So type UN for unit and change the unit to millimeter because we are working in millimeters here. So just make sure you have the right units. Also the precision, I'll set it to two decimal places because that's just sufficient for our drawing. Okay, the first thing here is circle. Now I'll start with circle and I'll make the first circle of radius 22.5. So with that radius, we will end up with a circle of diameter 45. And you can actually verify it simply by double clicking the circle. You can see that the diameter is 45 now. All right, so that is done. Now let's make the second one. So here is the second and now this radius is 25. So the diameter will be 50. Now we have got this, let's click on this home icon and let's convert it into 3D. So I'll go to press pull, select this region and add a height of five unit and enter and done. Press escape, go to visual style, change that to shades of gray because that's where it's gonna look clear. Now the next feature. For the next feature, I'll go to this front view. All right, and now coordinates this drop down and select view. So this will basically convert your current view into X, Y plane or the top plane. And we can only make drawings in the top plane in AutoCAD. So let's hide the grid as well. We don't need it. And now let's start making the drawing. Well, the first thing I'm gonna make is a line. So I'll just click randomly at any point here and I'll make a line of length 30 unit. Now I'll start with spline and let's now make this spline. So I'll just drag this point just like that, okay? And now I'll click here and then finally I'll again track this point and I'll click maybe about here. Press enter and here we have this spline shape. Now this was just for reference so I'll delete this line and now we have this shape. So we basically want this shape for our feature and now maybe I'll add a circle as well. So I'll add a circle of radius one unit. So the diameter here is two. Okay. Now that is done, the next step is sweeping this along this circle. So let's go to sweep here, select the object, press enter, select the path and done. Now this is what we have. It's time to move it properly. Now for moving this, I'll go to this back view, which happens to be the top view now. And also I'll change the coordinates to default by clicking this globe icon. Now this is the X, Y plane. Okay, let's select this, click on move, and I'll select this center point and I'll just click right here. Now I'll select it again, go to move, select this point 
and move it right here now in between these two points so you can either eyeball it or you can add a proper distance as well now as you know the diameter for the smaller circle is 45 and the larger one is 50 which means the radius is 22.5 for the smaller one and 25 for the larger one so any value in between that will just make it somewhere in between this so here I'll add the distance of 23.75 and that will place it exactly at the center of these two circles all right or at the midline so with that done now we can orbit this drawing just to see what we have here and that's the shape that we have all right now let's create an array to do that I'll go to modify this drop down and select polar array now select this object press enter now select the center any center is just fine for this example and here we have the array now change number of objects I'll change that to 18 just to make it well dense and here we are now if you want to increase its density even further you can do that so maybe let's try with 24 how it looks and 24 yeah it actually looks better so i'll maybe keep it at 24. so with that i'll make sure that associative is not checked that's an important option because if you keep it checked all of these objects will look like a single object which we don't want we want to keep all of these segments separate so i'll just keep this one unchecked and with that i'll click on close array and we are done now we just need to make the base now to make the base i'll go to the stop plane and here we'll make the base so I'll go to circle and right here we just need to start with that so here now now the center is visible if it is not visible you can just move your cursor to the boundary and the center will show up all right so here I will make it with a radius of 12 but in your case it could be different because I just eyeballed this feature so all you need to do is just ensure that it just passes beyond that and there is some room as well the way I'm doing it so I think radius of 12 will make it this big and that's what I want for this so I'll just make it 12 all right that's done and actually I just made it really big 12 and 12 so double click and here's the circle I'll double click this and I'll just change that to 12 all right now that's manageable let's double click our middle mouse wheel and that's the proper one so let's go to circle again the same center and let's make another one now this one should be well small enough for this so maybe I think I should just stop at 7 or 7.5 I think I should stop at 7.5 so 7.5 there we are so I've got these two circles now I'll orbit this and let's press pull this now for press pull I'll maybe once again move it like this select press pull and let's see if we can and yes we can now add the height which is 5 enter done and it is done now we just need to move it at the right place and to do that I'll go to this back view and the object that we need is not visible so I'll just select this right click isolate and hide object now we can see it so select this and using this gizmo you can move it down or you can also use move tool in this case I'll use gizmo now if the gizmo is not visible then you can click on this move gizmo and that's going to show up so select this and move it down again I'm simply eyeballing it so I'll just move it in such a way that it fits something like this um, maybe right about here so I'll just ensure that it looks like this okay and we are done now let's orbit this drawing and here we are so it is perfectly placed in the right spot now we can remove all the circles so select this circle right click select similar it will select all the circles press delete and once again right click isolate and end object isolation that will bring the hidden object and here we are we have got this feature which we will now 3d print but before we do that let's combine it all together into one unit and to do that I'll go to this boolean tool which is solid union select it all press enter now it's all one piece okay so we have the 3d object now how do we export it for 3d printing well that's very easy all you need to do is just export this file as stl so i'll go to application export other formats and here we have stl select stl and i'll select desktop right here and let's give it a name so 3d print that's the name I'm gonna give it and click on save now select the object which you want to export and press enter and it is done now 
the object is exported as an STL. Now let me open that file in the slicer. Now the slicer software which I am using is Cura and slicer software is the one which will convert your STL file into G code that a 3D printer can understand. So you can use any slicer software for example you can even use Cura or if you want you can use mesh mixer and there are also several other tools that you can use instead of making use of slicer you can convert it into g-code using several different softwares so all we need is converting this stl into g-code cura is a free option so you can use that so now i'll double click my stl file and that's going to open it in ultimaker cura and here we are so we've got this drawing right here all right now the drawing is open all we need to do is just select it and slice it so select and i've already made all the settings like my material the nozzle size the print bed temperature the nozzle temperature everything is all preset because i regularly print with pla so i've already made these settings but if you don't have those settings all configured then you can do that here so here are all the settings usually you don't need to do that the default settings are just fine but just in case you want to do that that's right here so with that i'll click on slice and it's done it's going to take 3 hour and 28 minutes and 16 gram of pla so let's save this g code on our desktop so save to disk and here we have the g code file on desktop i'll just save it and we are done now let's go to 3d printer all right so here is the final piece as you can see there is a little bit of a stringing here and that's mostly because of high temperature of the PLA which we can fix in our slicer software but overall this just came out really clean and now I have a holder for my rugby ball and here it is now it won't roll off the table that's what I wanted so that's how you can create and 3d print objects in AutoCAD before we wrap it up in case you missed it Autodesk is running a discount of 15% on AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT annual and 20% on three year subscription the discount is available from January 10th to 13th only check the link in the description to get your discount now